All right, so again, I'm hoping most of you read my thread. Um, and if you didn't, that's okay. You can still got time to read it, okay? But again, the other thing I want to emphasize in this class is how important and why you should pay attention to bodies, okay? So there's obviously a lot of fair value gaps in the chart, right? There's like even this one. This one hasn't been. This one was kind of rebalanced already. But like this one hasn't been rebalanced. So there's a lot of fair value gaps, okay? And paying attention to the bodies and how to use how bodies can tell you where the draw liquidity is important okay I didn't realize it but if you if you kind of look closely and back test this a little more um, if a body respects the fair value gap and you get a setup out of it that often means the draw and liquidity is the opposite way okay so like this is a perfect perfect example okay so you can see this is uh, by the way I'm gonna refer to like a I guess this is inverse fair value gap, but some might consider this a BPR. Um, I was consider this. I'll just uh, say this is an inverse fair value gap for now. Okay, but again, it always depends on the time frame. So if we go to like the time, the five minute time frame here, and we go to the five minute. Okay, there's no good fair value gap on this besides one right here. Okay, but is the body? Do the bodies respect this fair value gap? Yes, it does. Okay, you can see. What ICT says is Wix you the damage, bodies tell the story. Okay, and it's always, a, even though sometimes the bodies might close blow and we might go back up, okay, the most precise days and the, the best price action is when bodies respect the fair value gaps. Okay, you know how ICT says, oh, this is bad price action, don't trade it. Okay, what he's talking about is a lot of times bad price action, you'll see kind of closes above and below fair value gaps and they still get respected. Okay, but when you see bodies respect fair value gaps, that usually means price is pretty um, precise and pretty accurate for that trading session. Okay, so um, in this example right here, if you just look at the five minute, like right here, actually, okay, you can see these bodies respected. Okay, but is there any other fair value gap? Nope. But if we go to the 15 minute chart, okay, we can see we see a new fair value gap. Okay, and if we drive this out a little bit, okay, you can see this is already rebalanced at this time. But then you can see over here, um, even in hindsight, like this is something you can notice in hindsight. If you see this red candle, this red candle, right? And you're kind of like, okay, this red candle has a close blow yet, okay? It's kind of like, this is it, is it fully bearish? But maybe you want to be bearish here. Maybe you're starting to lean bearish a little bit. But then let's say you play another candle and you see this, you cannot be bearish, okay? No matter how hard you want to be bearish, this is not something you could be bearish on, okay? If you ever see something like this, if you ever see like a nice fair rag up here and you see a bunch of wicks below a fair rag up but the body never closes below it, okay, that can, you cannot be bearish yet, okay? I promise you that will get you wrecked so many times, okay? And even in hindsight, let's say you kind of, you don't catch this move, like you don't catch this, you don't catch this, but you kind of see, okay, the bodies are respecting, all that means is you just want to go to the smaller time frame, right? This is the 15 minute. Go to a smaller time frame and you want to look for a long setup, okay? And even if you don't get in, right? Even if you think we're going to dump under here and you're not in at this point, that still means you can still get in, right? You still have time to get in. You can get in on like the first or second distribution leg. Okay, so like right here, you can see there's like a breaker combined with a fair value gap. So your risk reward could be something like Maybe the middle of that, okay? Maybe your stop is a close beneath this, and then your target's up here, something like this. And um, in this situation, I don't know if it ever, yeah, so in this situation, it never actually gets to this fair value gap, okay? And again, the reason why it doesn't retrace to some fair value gaps is because there's a breaker or an inverse fair value gap above it. But like right here, even though there is no candle, like even though there's a bunch of wicks on the 15 minute close below this, Okay, you will determine the draw and liquidity based on the close and open of the candles, right? If you don't see a close below a certain fair value gap, that doesn't mean that fair value gap's been violated, meaning that if you see a spouse from there, the draw is probably up, okay? And I just want to reiterate this. If, if there's no five minute fair value gap and there's a close under, this does not mean anything. It has to be in the same time frame. The closes has to be in the t same time frame where the fair value gap is. So you can't use a five minute close for a 15 minute fair value gap, right? Because there's no five minute fair value gap here. It must be a 15 minute close with a 15 minute fair value gap. Does everyone understand that? Type one if you do. 
Okay. So you got to make sure it's the same time frame. That's the other important thing. And again, the, the main idea of, okay, here's how you determine the drill liquidity. It's always the can of closes above and below, right? Okay. Um, and they got to be decent sized can of closes above and below. Okay. Like this can right here, I would consider this a pretty major close above. Okay. And there's no close below. Okay. Like something like this, see how this just gets, see how this is the only fair value gap in here, right? When I talk about inverses, okay, I only like using this one in the leg. So there's only one in this leg. So this is the end, I would use this. Versus remember, if there's like a million in the leg, I, I don't like using them. So see how there's like two here? Maybe that combines in the one in the higher time frame, but you cannot use this as an inverse on the 15 minute because there's two and it's not gonna be as accurate, okay? But in this leg, because there's one, right, you could use this. But you want to see, again, you want to see kind of a major violation. So major close above, major close below. In this situation, you're going to see this fair value gap gets totally violated. We close above it, which means what? Which means the draw will probably keep going up. In this situation, this is a little different because we already had a lot of engineered buy side. My guess is that if there was no engineered buy side here, we probably wouldn't have gone up as much. But, again... Candle close violates this, tells you the draw is going to be up, right? Um, same thing if, like, see how, like, right now this looks like a great long setup? But if we were to hit this buy side, you want to take it, okay? It doesn't mean it can't work, but now that we have this, what looks like a good long setup, I bet you if you hit this buy side, you want to anticipate this being used as an inverse, but you cannot use it as an inverse until it kind of gets closed below, okay? So we hit buy side here. I don't even know what happens next. And um, I don't think we ever get back down to it anyways. Yeah, we never get back down to it anyways. Um, but again, you hit buy side, and this is the fair value gap. Well, because this has already been rebalanced, this is the one you'd use right here. Um, but again, you do not want to take a fair value gap. Like a lot of people ask me, why did this fair value gap work? Because we hit buy side. Even though it might work, you're not you're not taking it, right? You're anticipating it, or you want it to work as an inverse, so you want us to dump below it so you could short it instead. But that doesn't always happen, okay? Someone asked me that on um, Thursday or Friday, I mean. Okay, so like someone asked me, I think it was this for a bag up. We already hit buy side, and they're like, why does this for a bag up work? Okay, it's not just luck. It's not random. It just works because they obviously want to run the highs again. Okay, but you're not really taking a fair value up like this because first of all, it's too high. Second of all, we've hit buy side on like the major time frame, I think, at this point. Um, and, you know, we're way in the premium, so you're not taking that just for the sake of we're way in premium. But what you want to do is you want to anticipate us to close below it, and then as soon as we close below it, you're trying to, okay, now we close it below it, we're violating it, right? It's better if it lines up with market structure shifts, okay? The strongest market structure shifts will always have a fair value gap violated and a swing low violated. The weakest market structure shifts will always have just a swing low violated. Okay, write that in your notes. Um, but like I said, price is not bearish until we get a nice violation of this. Okay, I know some of you were thinking right here, right, we close blow it. Why isn't this bearish? I wouldn't really consider this a good close blow. You want to see like a, a decent size close blow. So this is a little better of a candle. Okay, and do you see how like you can't be bearish until it gets closed below, right? No matter how hard you want to be bearish, you cannot confidently be bearish until it's closed below. Okay, sometimes you can jump the gun, which some people do sometimes. Okay, so sometimes what you can do is um, you kind of see like a new bullish for a gap forming and you kind of anticipate, okay, because we closed below this, you're now expecting the same leg to close below this. What I said in the notes, and by the way, this is going to be recorded, the strongest market structure shifts also violate PD arrays. Okay? The weakest market structure shifts do not violate a PD array. It just violates a swing lower high. Okay? Did you catch that? So you always want to look for the market structure shifts that violate a PD array at the same time. Understand? It's going to be recorded. So, strongest market structure shift violates. The strongest market structure shift will also violate a PD array at the same time. 
The weakest marker structure shifts will will only violate just one of them. They'll only violate a, a PD ray, maybe not a swing low, or they'll only violate a um, swing low. BPR range is where price consolidates, not necessarily. Usually when you're traced to a BPR, usually you get a quick movement out of it. Yes, exactly what Krazy said. Perfect. Okay, so sometimes what you can do is you can obviously jump the gun a little bit and be like, okay, you can violate this, but is this really a market structure shift? Not really. Is this a market structure shift? Hell yes. Okay, we violate this at the same time and we close below the swing low. We'd have a decent amount of displacement out of this. So this is just a really good market structure shift. And what happens? We create a fair value gap. And you can see because, I mean, there is a close over it. But, you know, this break in this body just tells the whole story. There's not a strong close over it. Obviously, this is at 3.30 a.m. when the market wasn't even open. So, I mean, do like this is going to be a lot sloppier than if it was an actual session. But, like, even right here, right, you can see this bullish for value gap holds right here. Holds right here. Holds a little right here. And then, boom, the first candle we get that we blow it. Okay, you can see we just... Retrace back up and just totally reject it. Okay. Why do I like this for value gap? Like why why is this so important? Someone remind me. Yeah, exactly. It's the only fair value gap. Again, so because it's the only one in the leg, it just makes the most sense to use the inverse. Okay, same thing with this. If we got like a stronger close above this with maybe a second fair value gap here, this would have probably been a good long. But there wasn't really a strong close above it. We we almost did, but then the wick kind of shut us down a little bit. There's no fair value gaps here. You can is there any fair value gaps in the displacement? Nope. Okay. Versus right here, you can see like there's a fair value gap here. We violate to the upside. Use it as support. Here's a fair value gap. We violate to the downside. Use it as resistance. Except. The only difference in this one is there's actually a um, breaker right here. Okay, so you can see there's there's actually a PD array that kind of combines with the inverse, and that's those are the best setups. Okay, um, so again, that's very important to know. And okay, going back to the drawn liquidity. Okay. Um, even like right here, okay. See how like this one's close above, but again, why do I only like when there's only two in the leg or one in the leg? Because light sometimes it can mess you up. Like you don't know whether if this gets violated, you don't know if we're gonna go hit the highs because there's also one up here. See how this one just closes like a tick above it? Again, that's not strong enough close for me. I would want to see more violation of there, which we didn't get. Um, again, this is at 1 a.m., so it's gonna be when price gets a little more sloppy. But like right here, okay. If price closed above this, okay, bias would have been bearish. Okay. If price closed below this, which it never did, okay, price would have been what? Price would have been very bearish because we're closing literally bit below what you could argue this is a BPR. Okay. Um, but it never did. So really until that happens, you can't be bullish or bearish. Okay, same thing on the right here. You have to be you have to be bullish unless you get a close under this. Why this one? Because this is the only one in the leg. It's the only one at discount. Okay. Obviously, this one up here, but this is kind of irrelevant because this is a premium. Um, but like it, you really physically cannot be bearish unless this gets really violated, which it never was. Okay. And it t every fair value gap, every single fair value gap tells you the draw on liquidity. Okay, I promise you. Okay, this tells you the draw on liquidity. So how does this tell you the draw on liquidity? Yeah, I know, Lamp, I agree. Someone tell me, how does this tell you the draw on liquidity? How does this fair I got tell you?
Yeah, exactly. If we close above it, the draw is probably the next high. But if we respect it and get a short setup out of it, that means the draw is probably the next low. Okay, and someone could probably argue, oh, this was a short setup. Okay, I don't really see any textbook shorts here. Okay, there's no, I mean, the only thing I kind of see is this. This is more of a hindsight thing. But it's not great. Okay, this is like a weak short setup. Um, we don't really displace any under under any load that much. Okay, the only thing you can argue is, oh, this is a short setup because there's a bearish free rally gap. But there's not a much displacement under any low. And even if you wanted to argue that, where do we displace to? All we do is we displace to another free rally gap here, which wasn't violated. So I'd actually argue there's never a short setup here. But again, if you see us kind of sit in this free rally gap for a while, and what I notice is a lot of times when we do sit in these for a while, they end up being violated anyways. And you see, like, see how we get this candle, this candle. That tells you the draw is going to be the next high, right? And it's not like, oh, we close above the the bulls for value gap, so you're bullish. It's like, oh, we close above the for value gap. You know where the market has to go now, okay? There's a difference in knowing where the market has to go versus knowing that the bias is bullish, okay? It's a very huge difference of that, okay? Now, what if we violated something like this, okay? I probably would have changed my mind, okay? I probably would have been bearish if this was violated. This is the free value gap. This just, it's got to work, you know? Um, it's got to work, okay? And if it, it's violated, you got to change your bias very, very quick, okay? That's why whenever ICT says if 3D PD rays get fucked, you're, or if 3D PD rays get violated, you're probably fucked, right? Um, because, again, you need to see the, all the PD rays work and if they don't, likely they're going to be used as on the opposite side. Okay. Um, this is a little different scenario here. So what you can see here is we actually do get a, a strong body close above. Okay. The only reason why I don't like, why do you guys think I don't like this and like to use this as an inverse? I've said this a decent amount. Not really leopard. That's why I only like when there's only one in the leg. Yes, when there's two more in the leg. That's going to be a whole different class, and, and you're just going to need screen time, but why do I not like this one as much? Yes, exactly. One of you got it. Only one of you got it. Who do you think it is? A lot of answers, but only one of you got it. No, it wasn't Dustin. No. What did I say about looking over to the left? For you guys who don't join my live streams every day, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, so that's fine. All right, uh, I'll just wait to these years. Are you talking about this, Clint? Again, you don't have to answer. Okay, it has to do with the side of the curve. What do I say about the sides of the curve? Why do I not really take a fair value gap heavily into account? If I'm, if I'm on the opposite side of the curve, do I really take a fair value gap on the other side of the curve into account that much? Good job. Okay, Leopard, you got it. So, again, because this was, fair value gap was way before, probably like the previous day or two days ago, and it's on the, the sell side of the curve, and when we're on the buy side here, Typically, I stop caring about these, okay? All right, I stop caring too much about them, okay? The only time I like to care about these is if we were to retrace right then, okay? Did we ever retrace right then? Nope, we never did. Okay, now they came back two days later, probably wouldn't take too, probably would not put too much uh, weight into it, okay? 
Um, do you see how, like, this right here, see how there's just, there's too many fair value gaps to choose from. There's this one, this one, this one, right? So here's, like, a situation where I just want to worry about using inverse here. Not as clean, right? You only want the clean inverses, meaning only one in the leg. So that's why I, like, in this, I won't even bother drawing these out. I mean, I'll kind of keep in mind, but I won't bother drawing these out because there's too many here. Um, yeah, I agree, Clint. So again, here's just a, here's a good example of what I don't like for inverses because there's just too many here. Okay, and again, if it's not clean, if there's not one in the leg, you're gonna, it's going to be hard to determine the drawn liquidity just on a few inverses. I mean, in hindsight, you can see, yeah, we close below this, use it as, use it as a resistance, um, and then we kind of close back above this, use this as support. Kind of messy, not something you trade in a lot of time. There's too many variables here. That's another thing I've been starting to teach. If there's too many variables, meaning too many order blocks, too many fair value gaps, Read deliveries from like two different fair value gaps. Just don't trade it, okay? Make sure you're understanding if there's only like one or two variables that you have to play with, right? It's probably going to be a better setup. You're going to know what's going on versus if there's like 50 million fair value gaps around, I say there's too many variables to trade and I would just stay out, okay? See how this is like one variable? It's just one fair value gap. There's nothing else around. It's one variable you got to work with and it just makes the most sense versus right here too many variables to work with okay what if there's only one of the r1 <laughs> if there's one on the r1 and two on the 15 then i'll and that and i see a close above or below in the hourly then i'll use the hourly so if i go to the hourly and i see okay the 15 minute very value gap has combined into one okay i'll use the hourly but even you can see here, see how it's still messy? See how there's still three just sitting here? Too messy for me. I just won't touch it. Okay. On the hourly, what you do see is you actually do see a strong candle close above this in the hourly. And you see it uses support. So the 15 minute and the hourly kind of tell the same story on, on this particular example. Okay. Versus the hourly says... Okay, there's a single bearish fair value gap here. I'm going to be more interested in using this one versus there's three here. Could go a little messy. Could get a little choppy inside here, right? Um, that's why I always prefer the use of one. Same thing with like right here. I can tell you right now, the rebalance off this, yes. Does it make sense to look for a lower time frame long setup off it? Yes. Okay, are we blindly long it? No. But let's say we do not get a lower time frame setup, and let's say we just get a candle, an hourly candle closes right beneath this, then the bias should be bearish at least till we hit this low. Okay, and that's why a candle close is so important. And if you look at this, this is the 15 minute fair value I get from before. Okay, you can tell, see how, see how this 15 minute fair value gap, see how it lines up with these wicks right here? That probably means that this is a rejection block. Okay, so kind of two different confluences there. Um, so yeah, and again, if we were to violate this and close above it, okay, what would the bias, where, where should the market go if we close, had a strong close above this? Like, it would have to be now. If it's like tomorrow, I probably won't care about it too much. It has to be now, but... Where should the market theoretically go if we were to come up right here and close above it now? Yeah, exactly. The swing high and the equal highs. Okay, so this would be your second target. This would be your first target. And this would be the first target just because this is these are equal highs. So if anything, you would be pretty confident these are going to hit if these didn't hit. Um, now, if we spent like a day here and just kept consolidating and then come back a day later, probably wouldn't care about this too much, but I still think it's like early enough to where this could be used, you know? It's kind of just like a vibe thing based off of screen time. Um, same thing with this. My guess is if we close, see how like we almost closed above it, but we didn't? Okay. 
That makes this not bearish yet, but my guess is if we close under it, we'll go down and hit at least this low. Okay, why this low? It's a low be before a unbalanced ruby I gap. And then probably this low. And this is just a screen time thing, like, I don't know. Would you expect price to retrace into this tiny ass thing and rebalance, or would you expect price to come here? Probably the bigger one. That's just a screen time thing. But the fact that we're holding this one right now means price still technically is not bearish, okay? Which may, would make me very ca cautious to short. Let's say we got a short setup out of here. If we got a short setup out of here, I'd expect us to dump all through this and I'd expect us to come right down to this low. Okay, because if the hourly were to go to here and then dump, that looked to me like more like a sell model versus because we didn't really get any uh, entries of shorts in here, wouldn't guarantee this is a sell model just yet, but a sell model would go down and hit this low down here. Yeah, and like Leopard said, um, you can see down here is discount. We already kind of tagged it, but. Sometimes what happens, by the way, as well, is you'll see like these very bad gifts and discount, and you'll kind of see a fair value cap that might not be in discount and what happens is we wick to discount outside the fair value gap but then the body ends up holding it that is very bullish All right, if you see that that is extremely bullish because you can see the body or the wick comes on the discount where it needs to go or needs for a trace to go higher and the body just say, stays above will be the entry conf entry confirmation be something like this so if I look for an entry confirmation right now I probably want to see a decent amount of displacement up here right now, and then I want to see like a fair value gap, and I'd pry along that, so something like this. And the reason why this is a confirmation entry is because it's a much tighter stop loss versus if your stop loss was having to do with this hourly fair value gap would probably be down here. Okay, so like a confirmation entry is just like a lower time frame setup where you get kind of a second fair value gap. Yeah, Leopard, if we get a short off it, that'd be nice. I gotta see. I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, by the way, so I'm alerting a lot more. Um, I'm alerting a lot more plays and gold, ES, MQ. Um, like literally straight up alerts. I know some people don't like that. I know some people do, but I um, felt more comfortable than newer guys, so I've been alerting a lot more. So um, if we did get like a, a short setup out of this early free bag up, I'll definitely alert that tomorrow. Uh, I will not explain SMT. I mean, I can do a quick explanation real quick, but that's I have a video on that, Tony. What an SMT is, is basically if you're looking at like ES and NQ side by side. Um, if you're looking at ES and NQ side by side, all it is is when one makes a lower low. So let me see if there's an SMT here. Uh, I do not see any SMTs right now. Uh. Uh, yeah, I stream every day during market hours. All right, this is an SMT right here. Wait, no, it's not. All it is is so I can't see one right now. I don't know why. I'm struggling so hard. All it is is if ES makes a higher high and NQ makes a lower high or lower low or whatever. Like a bullish SMT would be. Why is it so hard to find SMTs right now? So see right here how this would be bearish SMT. See how ES makes a higher high but NQ makes a lower low or lower high? This means, and you can see we just dump right after. That's what an SMT is. It's between the indexes. It's kind of like an anomaly. Understand? 
Yeah, stream is only for a premium. But I do some free streams. I'll do like a free stream maybe this week or next week. I don't know yet. I haven't done one in a while. Do you have another example of lower time frame setup play off a higher time frame? Not directly on me. Um, oh, gold. Yeah, gold. So gold gold is a play. I said look for longs in here. So once we get in here, you obviously don't want to long this. You want to go lower time frame. Look for a confirmation setup, which would be a second setup. So you can see gold. We got into the zone. And then right here. We got our market structure shift, right? We violated this, meaning we had a decent close above it. And if you look carefully, okay, see how we violate this? We have a fair value gap underneath an inverse, and the body never closes below the inverse, and we respect the fair value gap. And we violate this, and we have a market structure shift. So this was a smart confirmation entry out of a higher time frame for a gap. And once you see this respected, that just tells you the draw on liquidity has to be way higher because if you know we're getting a type of this setup, which is an A plus setup, in a higher time frame for a gap, well, you know the draw has to be much higher. Okay, the draw is not just gonna hit this high, especially for bouncing out of a higher time frame for a gap. You know it should be higher. All right, if I see a long setup off of this right now, Okay, because we're in such a higher time frame frame value gap, the draw is probably going to be much higher than this. So it's probably going to make me more of like a, okay, I'm bullish over the next day instead of bullish over the next five minutes. Okay, let's say this wasn't a frame value gap and let's say this was more of like a scalp. Then I'd only be bullish for like this high probably. Okay, it depends on the time frame that will tell you the draw on liquidity and how long the draw on liquidity will last. Yes, I know, 12,000 or 120,000. I've been doing it. So, like, I bet you if this was violated, right, I bet you the draw would be up to this high. That's how I determine the draw so easily. Um, you really don't, Kalina, or G, I don't know what your name is. G, you really don't. Um, usually you won't, uh, usually you will not expect another run in the highs or lows if a bearish fair value gap is violated, okay? Because we violated all this, my guess is we should not run for these lows again and then get another long setup. My guess is because we've already violated this, if we run below this, I bet you you run way farther than just this low because we don't really need to take out this low again after we've already taken all of these lows, okay? Let's say this wasn't violated and we kind of just stopped here and started going down, then there's definitely a good chance this low gets taken out again. But I bet you if we come back down to this low, we're probably going much farther down. I form my bias in the morning after London completes. Why would I form my bias before a bunch of price action forms? Like sometimes I'll see like a 15 minute fair value gap formed in London session and I'll kind of base that in my New York session and be like, okay, this gets violated, I'm bearish for the day. Or if this gets violated, I'm bullish for the day. So like literally on, on Thursday or Friday when it was, this fair value gap was never violated. So I never really turned back bullish because of that. I was not an ICT chart member, but I mean, there's some ICT chart members in here who actually gave up and started relearning from me. Um, I got a lot of the ICT content before he uploaded on YouTube for free. I had a buddy send me the mega file way before he had Twitter, way before he no one anyone knew him. Chart member, just like an old member who used to be in it before, like or used to be in his videos before the. Uh, before we started teaching for free live. All right, well, that's the 30 minutes. Um, I think that's going to be it for now. Again, go back, watch this lesson. 
I think the best way and the best way to learn inverse free value gaps is just draw out every inverse, like draw out every free value gap on your chart, wait till them to be violated, and watch what happens. And you'll kind of get a feel for which ones work and which ones don't after like a month of, or two of just kind of back testing it. That's literally how it what happened for me. So now I kind of, I understand my intuition and the vibe behind like, okay, I've seen a fair value gap like this before where it's only been one. We've had a market structure shift, maybe we haven't. I kind of understand, okay, would this be a good one to use? Would this not be based off of screen time? So I, I suggest there's doing that and you'll kind of notice it. Um, so yeah, that's it for now. Uh, this is the lesson. This is the second done I've second time I've done this lesson. Um, I'm turning off the free trial for my Patreon tonight, probably a little bit, so um, I'm going to tap that off for a while. I am opening up the half off lifetimes again soon. Um, I probably can't play Among Us tonight. I'll be able to play Among Us maybe Wednesday night again, so yeah, I stream every day from 9.30 to 11. And then I stream every Sunday night. I do a class every Sunday night, usually an hour, but. Uh, and we'll do Among Us on Wednesday or Thursday. If you guys want to play, just shoot me a DM. Uh, if you're over the age of 30 or 40 and you have kids, I uh, probably won't enjoy it that much, but up to you. Yeah, 9.30 to 11 Eastern. Sometimes I go to 12, sometimes I stop, and then I start back at 1 and go to 4. It just depends on the day. But every single day I start at like 8.30 or 9 o'clock to 11. All right, well, I'll see you guys later. Yeah, sometimes I'll get on early if I'm bored. It just depends. All right, well, I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Everybody enjoy your dinner, and have a great night.